Hi, I'm Mike Meyer from MMI, and I'm going to talk to you about the meat and potatoes of our S550 strut system. We utilize a JRI shock or strut shaft. We marry it with our bodies, and what that means is basically wicked tunability. So let's jump into that. We give you offset keys, multiple keys, so you can swap them, you can change tire width. We, we're running a 315 in the front of our car under the stock fender, barely. But that also, by changing these keys and changing the spindle geometry, the angle of the strut, you not only can adjust camber, but you can adjust instant centers and roll center heights. So these keys are very important to being able to manipulate geometry if you're doing track stuff. Obviously it has the sway bar mounts in it. The other thing is we did a steel body. Steel bodies, we've used aluminum body struts in the past. They actually deform, they balloon out in the center from the side loading of the pistons. Um, so the steel body is there for longevity and life, and being that it's an upper control arm, you need that. The other thing that we do is the way the shock is assembled is we get the shafts here, we slip in the strut shaft, obviously you're going to fill it up with fluid and whatnot, but here's your dividing piston, this will be in here earlier, you know, in assembly, and then we also have the bottom uh, cap. Now what happens in here, this is a nitrogen chamber. This, oh, on the other side of this dividing piston, is fluid. So we have a large volume of fluid in here, and what the fluid does, it's compressed by the nitrogen. The nitrogen allows the fluid to be compressed all the time so it doesn't cavitate, doesn't get air bubbles. When you get air bubbles running through the piston, it gives you inconsistent dampening. The other thing that goes on here is um, we don't necessarily want to run a remote reservoir because a lot of times what the remote reservoir does, as the hose comes out the bottom to a remote reservoir, what that'll do is it gets pulsing and in the actual shock, the remote reservoir tube, and then they have a couple other things called crosstalk. We could talk about that another time. But basically it dirties up a lot of times what your butt feels in the seat of the car when you're driving. So we really try and keep it a clean and simple system with an internal nitrogen chamber and in the fluid up here with the piston. Okay, so we got the assembly of the shock figured out now. The next thing to understand about what we do with our shocks and why this shock is so important to you is the dyno characteristics. I'm going to jump right into that. This shaft gives you more adjustment than any other shaft in the industry. And how it does that is this cage at the end. This cage allows you to preload the shims or take preload out of the shims. And what that means, back in the day, you would revalve a shock. If you were running a lot of time, say, in rain, you would want that shock really soft. So you'd send it back to the manufacturer. They would put a really thin shim stack in there and let the car roll. They might even put some holes in the piston to let it comply and set into the, into the ground a little softer. But what we can do here is we can physically back out the preload and what that does it essentially revalves the shock on the spot if you're going to go to a high grip area you're going to want a fairly shim, thick shim stack you're going to want fairly small bleed holes and you want that car to respond now because the grip in the track will allow you to run a stiff system before we'd have to revalve that again and then utilize that this we just put preload into the shim stack whammo you got a revalve shock so the re this preload adjuster is like a very coarse adjuster. It's only on the rebound side, which means when the shock extends. So what happens is if it's raining, we show up to an event back east, and oh my God, we got afternoon showers, and that's when our run group is, where other guys would have to sit there and go, well, I got what I got. I can soften it up a little bit. We can back out the preload adjuster and basically revalve it right there. Now the second adjuster is more of an orthodox bleed adjuster. What that means is there's a hole in the end, so when you open up this needle and seat, it allows a certain amount of bypass to go through the center of the shaft, out this hole on the side, and virtually bypass the shim stack and piston. It's a floodgate. That right there is when you yank the wheel into the turn, you step on the brake, all the little hand movements is the little bleed guy. That's what makes you feel warm and fuzzy when you turn the wheel. The preload guy is what's going to control the whole platform control and, and the flop of the car. So, the other thing that we can do with this, I'm going to get a little more into this. I'm sorry it's taking so long. I'm going to grab a 
some parts here. Okay, so the way a shot graph looks, a lot of people wonder about this and they ask me these questions all the time. You'll see a lot of times a graph go wham, wham. What this is, generally the bottom half is rebound. The top half is compression. The rebound, what we've done for a long time, has just gone straight. And what happens is you have a force number here, and you have a distance here on the graph. What this distance is, people see it, it says inches per second. And this is pounds. So with inches per second, what you'll get is the shock will produce maybe 100 pounds of force at a half inch per second. What a half inch is here, it'll be 0.5, it'll be maybe 1, one inch, 2 inch, 3 inches, 4 inches, so on and so forth, up to 50 or 30 inches or whatever. We generally hang around in the 6 inch per range, 6 inch per second range. If we hit 50 pounds of force at 1 inch per second, 1 inch per second is generally the movement of your hands, 1 to 2 inches, your feet movement. As you get three, four inches of movement, inches a second, or inches per second, what that is, it's the more the car moves. If you hit a curb or a berm at a road course, that's further down the line. The bigger and more aggressive the bump is, the more inches per second that shock travels. So what happens is the graph here is what JRI does the best. They can sit there and they can make the shock be a little more supple and then flatten out. They can get an S curve like not many companies can do. And what this does, this curve, when you flick your wrist, it lets the car set a little bit. It lets it have a little bit of bite. And then what happens is it all of a sudden ramps up in the mid, which gives that platform control. So you have grip on low speed maneuvers, hands, feet, all those little things going over little bumps. But then when you yank the wheel, it doesn't let the car really dump. And that's this range. But then you don't want it to keep going down here. You want it to kind of flatten out a little bit for what we're doing so it doesn't start making the car jack down and have bad characteristics in the upper end with larger bumps. So with these two adjusters, the bleed and the high speed, the bleed shock, the or adjuster, the older adjuster, that adjusts this range in here. That allows us to feel a certain way, have the car grip up initially. The preload will allow it to adjust up in here. This is all on the rebound side. Majority of your valving, majority of what you feel in the car is on the rebound side. So we're not focusing like the old school stuff so much on the compression anymore. We get a base compression setting, works pretty darn good. But when we were able to separate these two regions and tune that, it was amazing. So MMI coupled with JRI have basically produced one of the best, if not the best strut that's ever been made for the S550. You can get this here. You can learn more. You can call us up. You can email us. But if you're looking for the best system possible, we physically assemble them here. We'll dyno them. We do shim stacks, different things. And not to mention we race them and we tune them all the time ourselves. So thanks for tuning in. I hope this you know, enlighten you a little bit. Check us out at MikeMeyerInc.com. Look at our Facebook page at Mike Meyer Inc. or our Instagram page at Mike Meyer Inc. Thanks again and have a great day.